Okay, so doing this video to show how I prep plates. Starting off, of course, need to clean the plates. If I have my stack of plates here to clean them, I use powdered laundry detergent, a sponge, and just enough water to make a paste. I'll go ahead and show with just a couple plates here. Um, once I get them rinsed in the pan in the tray here to dry, I'll go ahead and turn the, the video off, and then uh, we'll continue in the light in the dark room under safe light during the actual coating. And I don't just dissolve the. I don't just dissolve the soap into water because partially it's dissolved. It helps to add a bit of grit to help scrub down the plates. As you can see, there's still a lot that's just wet. And it's just scrubbing down both sides. I normally have just the water running to fill the tray there, but for audio quality, I've opted not to do that. But yeah, just scrubbing down on both sides. I use the tray here just to contain the mess. So go ahead and get these first ones rinsing. And once you get it scrubbed down, you definitely want to avoid using, uh, touching the surface with your fingers. Because obviously any sort of skin oil will keep the emulsion from sticking. And something you can look for is once you get them cleaned and rinsed, you should be able to float a layer of water across the surface. If you have any spots in the center where the water pulls away, you'll need to obviously uh, scrub that a little more. On this one, straight off a little excess. I can see that this one's floating water just fine. So this one's clean. Drain the excess water, and I just set it here on paper towel. So again, I'm just checking that I can float the water on the on the surface. Now, if I get a plate there where only one side will float the water, and just to be clear, by floating the water it means that I can get a continuous sheet of water across the entire surface. Uh, but if I can only get one side to float that water, I'll go ahead and when I set them here, prop it facing me. And then I'll be sure to keep that side up and that's the side that I will coat just to make sure that the emulsion does stick. 
Um, sometimes if you get glass from like the hardware store, which I often do, uh, sometimes the glues or something that is used in the packaging uh, or the plastic shrink, shrink wrap that is often used will stick to the glass itself at which point um, it's almost impossible to get off but once you can get that off it'll come clean it's just oftentimes a pain to do that now I'm going to go ahead and continue um, scrubbing down some of these plates and then uh, turn the camera off real quick and I'll bring you back when we're under the safe light doing the emulsion. So, hello, welcome to my dark phone. Um, real quick before I get the white light out, just let you know what I've got done here. Uh, this is a heating pad, as I'm sure you can see. Um, I use this to actually keep the plates themselves warm. Um, this has actually been warming up for a few minutes now. And in fact, I'll go ahead and reset the timer on that. There we go. And that just helps the uh, emulsion flow better on them. Um, over here I have my water bath ready for the emulsion. Uh, water bath just helps melt the emulsion down. Uh, I have the emulsion just over here. I normally keep that store cold, uh, cold stored. So I've been leaving it out letting it bring up to room temperature. And then with the scales here with the white light out I'll measure out the emulsion I'll need for the eight plates I'll be coating tonight. And then getting ready to add the uh, hardener once the emulsion melts. And then from there, I have a tray here for catching um, basically spillage. And we'll go ahead and get into that. So the Real quick, the water bath I use is actually a wax warmer, typically used for waxing hair, for hair removal. And then I've got that set to um, a 150 Fahrenheit for melting the emulsion. Uh, the emulsion says to bring it up to about 40, 45 C, which would put that at approximately 140 Fahrenheit, a 150 gives that temperature balance because we are using a uh, borosilicate flask for the melting. Okay, so go ahead and get the lights out and get that started. And then it's important to know how much emulsion I am pulling out so I can add the appropriate amount of hardener, which right now, as I'm sure you can see, I'm at about 53 grams. My goal for the eight plates is about 75 grams. just to uh, minimize waste. Okay, so just shy of 80 grams, that is close enough. Go ahead and get that turned off. I said off. Okay. 
Let me make sure that this is closed nice and tight. And that goes back in the box. And the emulsion goes into the water bath to melt. Get the scale out of the way. Now, when actually coating, having a darker background helps. So you can actually see the coating going on. So I'll put a piece of cardboard underneath my uh, tray here. Because the counter's white, the tray is clear. Doesn't exactly help me see much. <laughs> and then just double checking the hardener. Okay. So for every 100 grams of the emulsion, we'll take roughly uh, 1.5 milliliters of the hardener that came with it. Uh, this is the Foma Speed uh, emulsion with hardener. Um, and I like it. It gives me the results I need. Uh, and it's really easy to use and work with. So I was just waiting for the emulsion to melt here. And once the emulsion's melted, I'll be able to mix in the hardener and start coating plates. So while that is melting, a um, little bit about the process. Uh, basically what I'll be doing once I get that melted and the hardener in, I'll be picking up each plate, holding it from underneath, balancing it on my hand like I'm holding a platter. Uh, and then with a large syringe with no needle on it, I'll draw up a couple milliliters of the emulsion and spread that on the plate as I balance and tilt it to guide the emulsion across the plate. Once I have the plate covered, uh, any excess will be drained by the corner back into the uh, beaker here and then it's important to let it sit and dry once it's been coated. Um, for that drying, I actually have boxes that I've made light tight with gaffer's tape that I'll put those into. And those boxes go into a bigger box just to make sure that there's no light leakage on the plates. And they'll sit in the boxes for two to three days while they dry. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say that they should be done in about 12 hours, but that does depend a lot on humidity as well as airflow where they're being stored. Being that I'm storing them essentially in a box, um, there's not a lot of airflow. And these are just the other two plates that don't fit onto the heating pad. Um, the other thing important to have is some paper towel so that you can clean any excess emulsion off the back of the plate. It doesn't harm the image that you capture with the plate, but it'll cause the plate to stick to any surface that you're setting it on to dry. In my instance, putting it in the boxes, if I leave that extra emulsion on the bottom, it'll glue the plate to the box. And 
It's kind of a risky business when you're trying to pry a plate up without breaking it. Still a bit to go for uh, getting that emulsion to melt. And as I'm sure you've noticed, I do have gloves on. Mostly because the emulsion tends to be a little sticky. And I don't want to get fingerprints on my freshly cleaned plates either. As, as I mentioned previous, fingerprints on the plates can cause the emulsion to not stick to the plates. And sometimes you don't find that out until you go to develop said plate. At which point the emulsion will just lift right off and float away and then there goes your picture. Okay, so it is starting to melt. And this is, without a doubt, the slowest part of the entire process. But it is important to let the emulsion melt fully and reach a very thin consistency before adding the hardener, otherwise you just get chunks. And chunky emulsion is not fun. But as a little bit of it melts, then it starts to melt more. It's, it's like ice cream. Get a little bit melts, and it melts the whole, the whole rest of it faster. Okay, so there's just a couple large chunks left in there. And they should be uh, cleared out. They should be melted down soon. Now once this gets ready, I'm not going to videotape all of this. I'll videotape a first couple and then finish up after. And once I've done all of it and gotten cleaned up, I'll do a closing statement. There's just one last chunk in there. Now one thing definitely to remember when working with the raw emulsion, um, all your utensils, glass or stainless steel, anything else can react with the emulsion itself, either by pulling some of the silver out or um, contaminating it with other metals or materials. Because I know sounds like a great idea to use like, oh I'll use a silver spoon. Because that silver spoon is not pure silver, you're going to get copper, um, sometimes tin or zinc, as well as a little bit of silver. And that can discolor the emulsion. That can actually cause all of the silver in the emulsion to crash out. Um, which that's how you get like the solarized images. It's where the silver itself has auto-developed and you get just the silver on the uh, material. Okay. Okay, 
So that has dissolved. So now I add the hardener. I usually add the hardener in stages because you're supposed to do the hardener while constantly stirring. And it's kind of hard to do that without a stir plate. Or an assistant. I've got the hardener in. I'm just doing the final mix to make sure that get it well incorporated. the plates. And I'm just applying the emulsion on here with the syringe and then using the syringe itself to help guide the emulsion. I'm just making sure to get complete coverage on the plate. I don't worry too much about edge to edge coverage simply because my cameras don't take an image edge to edge and 90% of cameras won't. But once you've coated the plate, you tip the excess back into the uh, main beaker and just wipe the corner paper towel just underneath just make sure there's nothing underneath there so let's take the box and put it inside the box Put the plate inside the box. And 
And then the space emptied. I put a new plate in because, like I said, I do have the multiple plates here to work with. So now I'll go ahead and work through the rest of these and I'll check in after. Okay, so it's the next day. Um, I went ahead and finished coating the plates. I ended up coating a total of 18. Um, got all that cleaned up. Uh, the plates are currently drying in light tight boxes. Um, that can take up to three days. Um, some people will swear by 12 hour dry time, but that does depend a lot on um, airflow and humidity, um, being I have them in boxes <laughs> with no airflow, um, that'll take a couple days at least for those to dry. Um, but yeah, once those plates are dry, I will uh, pull them out and wrap them, put them into a single box, and then cold store them until I'm ready to use them. Uh, at which point I'll take them back in the dark room and load them into the holders. So with this video, that's how I do my dry plates. Um, some people will use a glass rod for spreading. Others will use a um, spin coater where the plate is actually spun. You put the, the uh, emulsion in the center and as it spins, the centripetal forces will push that emulsion out towards the edges of the plate. And that does cause a little more uh, waste, but um, it does get a even thin coat on the plate. Um, but that's my video. Have a good day.